start the line gopur can you get your drums and start hari krishna please okay mata ji what what did you say mata ji you are breaking up mukund can you get your mrudanga and play hari krishna mata ji i can play too just uh what tune Mataji Mataji Sorry Suraj I was doing live so I was on another page I could not unmute myself Suraj okay. yes you can play whatever tune you want you can sing if you want okay until Mataji okay. comes because if two more dangas uh, they have to match No no you can sing uh, separately and Mukund will be separately so you okay. you don't have to have that problem okay I know that everybody is a different have, have their different style. We can't hear you. It's really low. Even though your voice is very low. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Louder. 
Thank you, Vinda. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay, who wants to go next? In Ramachandra. See, without seeing. I want the kid who wants to go without seeing. Can Ramachandra say? Yes, please. Okay. Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Sivadam Tapatra Yonulanam Primad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Pare Rishwara Satya Varadhyate Trakriti Bi Shushubistakshanat Okay, thank you so much, um, Ramachandra. Yeah, Mataji is here with us. So, Mataji, by the time you come, I was asking them. To Mataji, can I do it without looking? Oh, what is that? Can I do it without looking? Yes, Mataji is there. Mataji will give you the opportunity. Okay, Mataji, please take over, Mataji. Okay, Mataji. Thank you so much for covering up, Mataji. Uh, Mataji? Yes, Mataji, I gave you rights. I'm going to just send you a WhatsApp message. Just acknowledge, Mataji, when you get it. Uh, sure, Mataji. Mataji. Yeah, but well, today, yeah, yeah uh, Mataji um, is subbing. Anyway, Mataji, could I... Uh, yeah, go ahead, dear, go ahead. Okay. Dharma Projita Kaito Votra Paramo Nirmatsara Nam Satam Vedim Vasava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Shrimad Bhagavate Nama Mahamuni Krite Kimba Pare Rishwara Sadhyo Maridya Avarudhi Te Krakriti Bishusha Bishtakshana Wow, Suraj, awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> Can That's great. Great. Oh, Samskriti, you want to go also? Okay, go ahead. Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmatsara Nam Shatam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatra Yo Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mamuni Krite Kimva Pare Ishwara Satya Hritya Varudya Teta Kriti Ve Shushu Shubishtachanat Okay, everybody is done? Mataji, can Krishna Naina say? Krishna Naina, yes, dear. Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Namat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatra Yohana Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamunikate Kimba Parira Ishvara Sadhya Hurda Varudya Tetukiti Visu Shribish Takshanat Thank you, Mataji Hare Krishna. Wonderful. So many of you all know without seeing. Anybody else left off? Can I take an answer, Mrs. Mukund? Everybody done? Um, Mataji, um, Mataji Mukund just go on and you just say, Mukund, something's wrong with your audio. Okay, Mataji, can I say this is Mukund? Yeah, go ahead, dear. Okay, Mataji. Dharma Projita Keta Votra Paramo Nirgat Saranam Satan. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vasta Shivadam Tapatra Yon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamani Krite Kimba Pare Rishwaraha Sadhya Hridya Virata Tetra Kata Vishwasta 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 Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, dear. Anybody else? Mataji, can I try it? But I only know Srimad Bhagavatam all the way to there. Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Rabbit G, can I try? I don't know all the way from the bag to Mahamuni Kutu. And the rest I don't know. Okay, the rest you can see. Okay. okay. Shri Man Bhagavate Namaha Muni Kutu Kimla Pari Ishwara Sadyot Kaya What about that thing? Don't you want to say Dharma Proji Katai Kavori Kaparama? Yes, Mataji. Dharma Proji Katai Kavori Kaparama Nema Sata Nam Sata Nityam Vastam Kate you can see. Yes, Mataji. But how do I see it? Oh, okay, okay. You don't have it? All right. Uh, let me just share my... Okay, now I change the verse also. You can... Okay, one minute. Um, you can go to Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.2. One dot one dot okay, I'll anyway share the screen. Uh, one second. Okay, go ahead. Your microphone has some voice. It's getting disturbed. What is that, Mataji? Oh, yeah, my voice is low. Yeah. No, no, not your voice, Mataji. Isha's microphone is getting some disturbance, so I muted her. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Mataji, is my microphone. Yeah, your microphone is very noisy, dear. So we can recite it next time. All right, Isha. Um, go ahead. Dharma projita kaita vota parabus imachara nam satam vedam vastam atravas shivadam tapatrayon mulanam shimad bhagavate mahamunikrita kimba pari ishwaraha satyo haradyate kimba pari no ishwara Thank you, dear Kabir. Dharma Vatra Paramo, El Matsaranam Satam, Vedam Pastamatra Vastu Shivadam, Tapatrayan Mulanam, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krete, Kimba Bareri Shara, Sadio Hedya Avurit. Thank you, Mataji. Wonderful. Okay, let me stop my screen share and I will share my screen. Actually, I thought of going through this verse, but anyways, you all wanted to go ahead with that uh, previous verse. From next class onwards, I think you'll be doing this one. Okay, Nigama Kalpataro Kalitam Palam. Anyways, next week we can see that. First, I'll just pray to uh, pray and get the blessings of all the acharyas so that I can get to speak the relevant words of Srila Prabhupada. Nirvishesh Shunyamadi, Pashai to the Shitarini, Chai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhuniti Ananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shivasa, the Gaura Bhaktavrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, um, what about today's? Actually, today will be the last day. We will be going through this chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the 15th chapter, first canto. So just to kind of give you all a recap, I think I took the class on Thursday. So you all must have heard the recap from me, isn't it? Uh, how, um, um, how Maharaj Yudhishthira retires. That was the episode we saw, isn't it? Uh, Yudhishthira, he decided to go back home go back to Godhead. Hearing this, Arjuna and Kunti, they also became very much absorbed in attention to Lord Krishna. And Krishna caused the Yedus to relinquish their bodies to relieve the burden from the earth. And then what happened was, uh, so Kali, uh, the day Lord Krishna left the earth, Kali happened to enter and fully manifested his inauspiciousness. 
and then uh, yudhishthira understood the influence of kali and after that what happened was he saw that there was uh, falsehood there was cheating and violence increasing very much so he wisely prepared himself to leave home and he dressed up accordingly and he left off then he enthroned parikshit maharaj who was very trained and qualified like himself then he posted bajra the son of krishna as the emperor of mathura and now maharaj yudhishthira he he is retiring and we saw that process how he retired and then he wore the torn cloth stopped eating speaking and he became like a deaf madman not waiting for his brothers he started towards north in the footsteps of the great souls to devote himself completely to the supreme lord and then what happened was seeing this uh, seeing kaliyuga the other pandavas also decided to follow his elder brother they all executed the religious principles and as a result chose to meditate upon lord speed without interruption and then what what happened was with the same body they were able to go to the abode of goloka vrindavana and then now we are going to see what happened to vidura what happened to draupadi and subhadra and what is the palashruti of hearing this chapter this is the essence of what we are going to see today okay are you all clear with the summarization and then what we are going to see in today's verse mm. are you all clear kids yes mata ji yes mata ji yes mata ji <coughs> Mata ji, we don't know what you're saying. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, dear. I happen to just be on mute. Okay. Are you all clear with the summary so far? What had happened and what we are going to see in today's episode? Yes. Okay. Samskriti says yes. Okay. So let's get into the story right away and get started with the class. So this is the episode we are going to see now. What is going on with Vidura? right what is going to happen to vidra is something we will see vidra while on pilgrimage left his body at prabasa because he was absorbed in the thought of krishna he was received by the denizens of pitruloka planet where he returned to his original post so we all know who is vidra vidra is yamaraj isn't it so he happened to go to pitruloka that is his office um there's a story that um he got cursed to um yeah I yeah we are going to see that yes absolutely you're right dear we are going to see I that and uh, um i know the story. wonderful wonderful so let uh, let's all leave it leave a bit of uh, that suspense for others who don't know okay and rai prahlad what happened here what do you want you have raised your hand Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I was. Uh, I wanted to read the like the Dharma Purana, so I raised my hand and I did not lower it. Oh, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. All right. So now we are going to see about what happened to Vidra. So what is the difference between the Pandavas and the Vidra? Is something we are going to see. Who are Pandavas? Pandavas are eternal associates of the Lord. Okay. they are always residing with the lord in goloka vrindavana but then vitra who is he he is the administrative demigods in charge of which planet pitruloka planet and he is also known as yamaraj okay and we all know of how people in this kaliyuga they are also afraid of yamaraj because why he awards punishment isn't it to the miscreants of this material world whoever does very sinful activities yamaraj he takes care of them but those who are devotees of the lord they don't have fear of him because they are pretty sure they are going to go to the eternal abode of the lord why would they be afraid of yamaraj no reason for them to be afraid of yamaraj so the devotees to the devotees he is a very cordial friend but to the non devotees he is fear personified meaning everybody fears of him oh my god oh my god look at yamaraj like that he will they will all be fearful of yamaraj okay these non devotees they are so much fearful of yamaraj who are non devotees those who don't 
chant the holy names of the lord they are non devotees they don't know the glories of the holy name of the lord till they come in contact with the devotee association they will stay to be ignorant so we really have to be compassionate towards them isn't it so that is the situation of those people and uh, since uh, we all know the secret to happiness that is to chant the glories of the holy names of the lord we should make sure to give it to as many people as possible which is the understanding and then what happens in the next slide at the end he was received by denizens of pitruloka and he posted in his and he got posted into his original position the lord remembers them what happens is we have a tendency to forget everything but the lord remembers every minute details and uh, so this is this is what is being conveyed by bhagavad gita 4.5 isn't it we are all part and part, parcels of the lord we tend to forget everything what has happened even a uh, hour before we forget it but lord remembers each and every in incident that has happened and that is what is reinstated in bhagavad gita so which is the purport which is what is the purport that shrila prabhupada is trying to say and then we look more into it okay um one second how will i have if i'm going to okay this is the way all right okay so vidura was yamaraj so a saintly person was brought before yamaraj for punishment so when a saintly person inquired from yamaraj oh i don't remember why i have committed what i have committed in my life why have i been brought here for judgment so yamaraj said you don't remember in your childhood you pricked one ant with a needle through the rectum and she died therefore you have to be punished so in childhood in ignorance somebody commits a sin even then that person has to be punished right so this is the understanding we have and hence we have to be really careful about what we do to others are we inflicting pain upon others that is something we really need to understand okay ma ji um yeah. actually there was a muni who who uh, actually did that and then yamaraj sent him but then he got cursed correct that is the story yes this is just from shila yeah go ahead Name is uh, Mandu Kamuni. Mandu Kamuni. Yes. Does somebody want to say that story? I'll give you an open forum. You can raise the hands up, and then you can say the story. Does somebody want to do? Rai Pragalat, go ahead, dear. Rai Pragalat. After that, Krishna. Go ahead, Rai Pragalat. Don't waste the time. Rai Pragla, are you there? Okay, Krishna, go ahead, dear. Want me to read it? Yeah, hey, Mataji. So um, so uh, so like um, so like how you said that um, saintly person, Mandukamuni was brought to um Yamaraj because mm. uh, like since he put put the ant with um like one of those needles. Mhm. Mm That's why Yamaraj brought him for the punishment. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then I think. Um, so does somebody they, else want to continue from here? What well, Krishna Naina left? Rai Pragalat, you want to say, dear? What happened? I can't hear you, my dear kid. Anyways, no problem. Okay, I think you are simply raising your hand. I'm not sure, but that's okay. So what Shila Prapath is trying to say here is that so this this incident, of course, uh, we we know this incident, and the point that we need to understand specifically here is that. for any action that we perform in this material world we are responsible for that action and hence we have to be really really careful 
what we are going to uh, do to other living entities are we going to inflict them pain are we going to give them suffering are we going to give them pleasure is our behavior going to be pleasing unpleasing how is it going to be these are all determining factors for us to get that reaction okay so we need to be very very careful austerity of speech bhagavad gita talks about isn't it anudvega karam vakyam so we need to be really careful are we inflicting pain are we displeasing someone happy are we having a pleasing demeanor are we speaking the truth like that we have to ask ourselves the question and then we have to react accordingly okay so now shila prabhat also says uh, also says why should we waste our time thinking so many nonsense things why not think about krishna how beautiful he is how he is standing with radha rani if he come here and take the impression simply think of him our life will be perfect this is krishna consciousness what is the difficulty what is your loss if you gain such a big profit simply by thinking about krishna why should you lose this opportunity of human form of life a cat cannot be educated a dog cannot be educated if you teach a dog my dear dog please see krishna he is an animal it is not possible but if you have train a human being although at the present moment he is like a dog but he can be trained to become a human being and he supports krishna that is possible so we should take use of this opportunity bahunam janmanam ante the life has gotten many many births we don't know we have forgotten this is the opportunity and here is the proof shastra krishne krishne veshena tat chittaha so we need to understand what what is shila prabha trying to say here everybody is given a human form of life isn't it because we are humans we are able to chant the glories of the holy names of the lord because we have our eyes in the human form we are able to see radha and krishna because we have our ears you are able to listen to radhika mata ji's class isn't it if you were a cat would you be paying attention to my class would you be able to understand what the teacher is saying even though you have your eyes you have your nose you have your ears you have your tongue and everything but you can't understand what is going on so prabhat says this human form of life has to be very very nicely used otherwise we are going to waste in nonsense things he says so we need to clearly understand the purpose of krishna consciousness why we have to be krishna consciousness he is saying that we are giving getting a such a big treasure this this life is very very nicey if you gain such a big profit by thinking about krishna why should you lose this opportunity you know from bhagavad gita there is this verse right neha vikramana sosti so what does that verse say in this path of bhakti there is no regression there is no loss you only gain because lord never forgets a teeny tiny bit of what you have done see he notes oh kavya is listening to this class give her one spiritual credit oh we have tulasi listening to this class give her another spiritual credit like that every credit goes to your bank account oh so you are earning so many credits that's why shila prabhat is saying you gain such a big profit by thinking about krishna okay kids so this is the understanding so let's go to the next verse uh, and see what is now we spoke about vidra and vidra where did he go he went to the prithruloka to continue his job okay he has his administrative duty to perform and hence he has to go and perform his administrative duty are you all clear so far so this is the understanding and then uh, we are going to see about draupadi now what happened with draupadi draupadi also saw her husbands without caring for her uh, without care, i mean without caring for her they were leaving home the husbands left her she knew very well about vasudev krishna the personality of god head both she and shubhadra became absorbed in the thoughts of krishna and attained the same results as their husbands okay so we need to understand draupadi also followed the footsteps of her husbands and then she also went and went to the eternal abode of the lord that is goloka vrindavana she along with subhadra they were all completely again absorbed themselves into meditation of chanting the glories of the holy names of the lord and then they attain the goloka planet so prabhupad's purport let's understand that okay okay what is the purport saying 
when flying an airplane one cannot take care of other planes everyone has to take care of their own plane and if there is any danger no other plane can help the another in another condition in, in that condition say for example two planes are there if one person is taking care of this one plane how can he take care of another plane which is playing if it is getting into some problems how will this person in this plane will be able to take care of this plane he cannot take care of it so he is saying everybody has to manage their own plane similarly at the end of life when one has to go back to god head everyone has to they help themselves without being helped by the other see we are uh, through from childhood you are all so fortunate you are all given this krishna conscious knowledge so when you become big boys when you become big adults and then when you go through the space of old age death may be nearing at that point nobody is going to come and tell you oh you have to do this you have to do that whatever you have practiced so far in your life you are going to well, what are you going to you are going to do that isn't it so if you are careless about krishna consciousness maybe at old age you will not be thinking about krishna so this is what happens right we know from eighth chapter in whatever consciousness you are that is the consciousness you carry forward at the time of death isn't it so this is what shila prabhat is trying to give us a uh, knowledge about uh, what would happen to us in old age nobody is going to come and take care of you but you have to help yourselves like how there are two planes one plane is being taken care of by one person and this person in this plane number one plane cannot take care of the number two plane it is not possible the help is however offered on the ground before flying in space yes the help is offered on ground means you are given training at the time when you are alive that is at the youth maybe at the grahastha time frame or maybe at the childhood phase depending upon when you get into krishna consciousness you are given training then similarly the spiritual master the father the mother the relatives the husbands and others they can all render help during one's lifetime but while crossing the sea one has to take care of himself and utilize the instructions that are formally received at the time of death nobody is going to come to you and tell you what you need to do because they nobody knows when we are going to die whatever we have practiced so far that's what remains with us and that is what will come to us at the time of death so he is saying what in this lifetime you can learn whatever you want from all these people right the spiritual master the father the mother relatives or teachers from govinda you are all learning from govinda teachers govinda group teachers like that you can learn but again at the time of death it's up to you what consciousness you are and that consciousness will depend upon what you have been doing throughout your life okay kids this is the understanding and uh, let's go into the purport now we are looking into purport of draupadi and subhadra what happened to them draupadi had five husbands and no one asked draupadi to come and come with her and come with them draupadi had to take care of herself without waiting for her great husbands and because she was already trained she at once took the concentration upon the lotus feet of the lord that is lord krishna the wives also got the same result as their husbands in the same manner that is to say without changing their bodies they reached the destination of god head with the same body they were able to go like how the pandavas with the self same body they were able to go to the goloka vrindavana like that draupadi and subhadra they were absorbing themselves in the consciousness of krishna and through that same consciousness they happened to meditate upon lord and chanted the glories of the holy name of the lord and they went into the eternal abode of lord krishna this is what happened to them uh, right and then we saw that uh, even though they were not uh, being called upon draupadi was not called upon by the husbands she just followed in the footsteps of her husband and she took care of herself and she was very well trained when she was alive she was very well trained in the art of krishna consciousness right even when she was disrobed in the hall of uh, in the um, in the assembly hall so what happened she immediately called out for krishna so she has the training she is always krishna conscious 
that is something we need to appreciate about mother draupadi right that is what was her consciousness when she lived and she carried forward the same consciousness at the time of her death also okay kids all right so the last verse which is the phala shruti of today's chapter so the subject of the departure of the sons of pandu for the ultimate goal of me back to godhead is fully auspicious and is perfectly pure therefore anyone who hears this narration with full devotional faith certainly gains devotional service of the lord and the highest perfection of life so you guys have been so sincerely hearing all the the whole chapter of uh, uh, shrimad bhagavatam that is the 15th chapter and so it is going to be really auspicious for all of you so more and more devotional service to the lord will be gained through this process and as a result you are going to get the highest perfection of life that is like the pandavas you will also be going to the eternal abode of the lord which is the phala shruti what do you get by reading this chapter okay kids so we covered three verses for today any questions today we have a moral story session after this so we have swapped actually this uh, monday class is being swapped to thursday and thursday's class is for is uh, now going on so that is what has happened if somebody is looking for the reason that is what is going on and uh, sita priti mata ji is not well hopefully she gets well pretty soon and she can uh, uh, come back and teach you all again okay kids you all have thank you ji for taking up last minute class thank you so much we are very oh. grateful to you oh no 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 mata ji not at all a problem um so kids any questions no mata ji okay rishita somebody new rishita i have never seen you dear oh uh, like i i wasn't new okay okay maybe he don't join on thursday right you don't join on this ah yeah okay okay very nice good to see you rishita all right um so can we go to the moral stories now Yes, Mother Ji. What's the lucky number? What's the lucky number? Who is asking? Yeah, what's the lucky number? Atharva. Atharva. Usually, Advait is there. Is Advait there? Advait asks this question. What's the lucky number? Yeah, Mother Ji, I was here. I was going to ask. Ah. Uh, so my mouth was full. Okay, because I was waiting to hear from. Uh, I mean, usually you are the first one to tell me what is the lucky yeah. number. But you know what? today the first story itself is 32 pages that means it's a oh. pretty long story so let okay. me but mata ji can i tell you something yeah, so today, sure, go ahead uh -huh. so today in the govinda group it said um govinda class is going to join at 6:15 so i joined but it's going to be the damodara group like i like a uh, miss see like i thought the I thought Govinda group was on six fifteen, but no exactly problem. One or two minutes, say you know you will have the other class. Then afterwards we will come. No, no. Yes. yeah, six fifteen is for the um, time zone. You have to check. You have checked. You you might be in a different time zone. You have to check your time zones. Okay, maybe because of that you got confused and you joined early. Yeah, but but it was fun. There was this run called um uh. Are you sleepy? Are you sleepy, little Krishna? Little Krishna, morning bells are ringing. Do it is our singing. Hari Bo, Hari Bo. Yes, was so cute, so cute, dear. Actually, you know what? Go. Damodar has uh, Ramayan going on, so you might want to check out. How old are you, dear? I am eight years old. Oh I yeah, you can try out. You can try out. Uh, Damodar, they are uh, really uh, delving into Ramayana, so that's also apart from the rhymes. Of course, those are so sweet. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I was exposed to these rhymes when I was young, but nevertheless, it's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, kids. Let's get started with our um, what do you call moral moral stories. Today I didn't prepare the P PPT. I'm sorry, kids. If somebody was looking for a PPT, I'm sorry. 
but yeah, we'll get through the presentation and see what we have. All right, the title is Kshatriya Queen. So, you know, like you guys, I'm also curious, really curious what is going to happen and what is the moral we are going to learn. So I usually don't prepare. So this is like a suspense for me also, especially the moral stories, okay? So let's just delve into it as soon as possible. There was once a battle when the Muslims sieged a Hindu fort. They surrounded the fort and waited for everyone to starve to de death. Oh my God, this is really brutal, isn't it? The Muslim king wanted the Hindu princess to marry him and he wouldn't recall his military until she agreed. Oh my God, she was kind of forced to get married to him. The Hindu king had been killed, so the queen was now the ruler. That is why we see Kshatriya queen, isn't it? That is the title. She didn't want to marry again. She was a chaste woman. She, that means so she just, uh, she, chaste women usually are very devoted to the particular uh, king she was married to, right? That is what is chaste. The queen replied to the Muslim king at the gate of the fort, I don't want to marry you and I won't. This is what is my final thing. All right, but let me see you once. A glance at you will satisfy and I'll go back to my kingdom. Like that this guy is saying. I'm a chaste woman. Why should I let a rogue like you see my body? No way. I will stop the war if you just look at me. Let me look at you. If I'll just stop the war if you just let me look at you just once. Okay? All right. You can look at me through a mirror. No problem. Like that she's saying. So she allowed him to look at her face in a mirror. The king didn't budge. That is not enough. If you don't marry, marry me, I will destroy your entire population. See, when she, first of all, what did he say? He said, just, I want to look at you once. And now after seeing, he is having greed now. This is not enough. If you don't marry me, I will destroy your entire population. Do you want that to happen? That is what he's asking. See how greedy he became? Then she was intelligent woman. Being a Kshatriya, she knew how to be diplomatic. I don't know what would, if I were in a situation like this, what would we do? She's intelligent. She's do you, going to do something very, very intelligent. I don't know what it is, but I'm really looking forward to see what is she going to do. But I'm not able to think of any good intelligent uh, proposition in my mind. She got an idea. Okay, I surrender. You can enjoy me. You can enjoy my beauty. Just give me a day for my makeover. So our meeting is enjoyable. Like that she told the Muslim king. I promise you, I will come to your camp tomorrow evening with some of my maid servants and then we can enjoy. But you have to stop the siege now and leave us alone. Okay. She's diplomatic. She's intelligent. She has a plan. I don't know what is that plan, but let's see. And now this Muslim king says, no problem. So he left the palace with his men and he went to his Muslim camp, which, which was a few hundred meters away. They had big party in her anticipation. The whole day they were drinking and dancing because they were anticipating a big deal. The Hindu princess is going to marry a Muslim king and they were all cherishing about the fact that that is going to come into reality. They all got drunk in excitement. Yes, the princess is coming. The princess is coming like that and drinking more and more and more. The queen promised the evening, the doors of the palace opened and so many palanquins came out. They were 100 palanquins carrying the queen and the maid servants. Oh my God. So when the Muslim emperor saw this, he began to dance in ecstasy. They began to drink more and more wine. Here comes the queen, here comes the queen. Like that, they were shouting and drinking more wine. All the soldiers were shouting like this. Here comes the maid servants. The servants were going to enjoy with the maid servants, I believe. That's why they are very excited about the maid servants. They put their weapons and they started putting perfumes and nice clothes so that they can look good and impress the queens. And the, the maid servants uh, are also coming. So the servants thought they have to impress them, isn't it? That's why they want to decorate themselves up. The women were very chaste, so the palanguins were all closed with curtains around them. 
and now the palanquins were getting closer and closer. Now I'm getting more anxious, isn't it? What is going to happen? And the palanquins got right inside the camp of the Muslims. Oh my God. Now what happened? All of a sudden, the Muslims heard this terrific roar. Suddenly, the Rajput soldiers jumped out of the palanquin. Oh my God, see? All the soldiers were there inside the palanquin. We thought that ladies were chased, so that's why the palanquins were covered. Now the warriors are getting out of the palanquins. They slaughtered all those Muslims to the last man. Oh, good job. Meanwhile, the queen was watching the whole thing from the palace. Not only the kings, but the queens had Kshatriya qualifies, so the, but also the queens had Kshatriya qualities in them in those days. She was watching. See, this is what is the story. Very, very nicely planned, isn't it? Because remember, these guys are all drinking wine and uh, very much intoxicated. So they are buddhi nasha pranashidna. They cannot think in that manner. When they are drink, when they are drunk, they cannot think and act in a right way. So they are not even in a position to fight. At this time, the queen made use of the opportunity to kill and smash off all these people. They were anticipating something else and they got something else in return. And Queen strategically planned this event. Very, very tactful and very, very intelligent she is, isn't it? Are you all able to follow this, kids? Uh, yes. yes. I'm like, I'm like what, 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 what? I'm not, <laughs> enough of the suspense, what? And then it's like, exactly, I, I was going oh, through the same emotions, Vishita. I, okay. thought, I thought there would be no one in it. Uh, I thought what? You, you thought what? I thought there would be no one like in those square things. In ah, yeah. But some, I mean, I was anticipating something. Would I, I was anticipating. See, they mentioned initially that the queens are all being carried. They're all chased. And that is why these uh, curtains are covered. So I was thinking, okay, really the queens are there. Queen and the maid servants are there inside the palanquin. Yeah. Reason. This is like, um, I remember I watched one Indian movie and uh, it was like this only. Yeah, okay. Really, I very nice. I thought this was very uh, dramatically, very nicely portrayed and how this women had Kshatriya qualities is being exhibited and how chaste they are to their husband is also very nicely exhibited, right? And they had a very intelligent mind uh, because you need intelligence to act in this way. And I think this is, uh, this character portrayed it so very well. So let's stop this presentation and I can do one more story if you want, okay? Another story, please. Uh, okay, Rishita, all set for you. Yay. All but for Mataji, you. But Mataji, yeah. where ah. would you find these stories? It's gone desired tree, dear. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into the next section. Next story. The king misunderstood Gopal. We have to get uh, going fast because after this there is Madhava class and they have to get uh, uh, the slot right. We'll complete it very fast. Okay. Okay. One day. One day, the king's wife gave birth to a male child. What is the title now? The king misunderstood Gopala. Okay. One day, king's wife gave birth to a male child and so the king was rejoicing. At that moment, what happened? Gopala came into king's room. See this guy. Gopala, on this very happy occasion, please tell me, what do you have to say? Tell me exactly how you feel at this moment. Like that, he, the king is asking. Frankly, at this moment, I feel very happy at the passing stool. <laughs> Gopala, how could you tell such a thing? On this auspicious day, that's all you have to say? Is that what you have to say? It's not funny and I don't appreciate your humor at all. Really, I mean, the king was expecting something else and this boy Gopal is saying something else. He feels happy because he passed through. How would somebody feel after hearing that statement? And that's how exactly this king felt when he Mataji, heard that statement. Mataji, what does the passing stool mean? Uh, so using the restroom, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's not funny and I don't appreciate your humor at all. Wait, uh, Mataji. Yeah. Can you go back up a little bit? Hmm. 
a little more. Okay. One more. I just want to see. Oh, okay. Okay, this is the statement. Yeah. Thank All you. right. After that, the relations between King and Gopal were strained for some time. Strain means they, they, the relationship is not good. But one day, Gopal was rowing a boat down to the river. Suddenly, had an urgent call of nature. The king had urgent call of nature. That means he needs to use the restroom very badly. On this side, there is a heavy jungle area. You can go there. It's not suitable. Let's let's go further down and we'll find a suitable place. Um, so like that, both of them were exchanging conversations with each other. Go over to that side. Like that, he was told. Not here. There is danger. Some thieves and dacoits are there. Your life may be endangered. There is a place ahead. We can go there. Gopal said that. Gopala, I can't wait any longer. Immediately go over to some place so that I can just you know, relaxedly passed too. Gopala had to go over and the king jumped out. He could hardly contain himself. It was so urgent. He had to pass too and there's no way he could take it any further than that. So the king had to jump out and then he had to go. This is what happened when the king returned. Now Gopal is asking the king, how are you feeling? I'm feeling very happy after passing stool. <laughs> Don't you remember? This was exactly the situation I was in when your child was born. That is why I said that statement. I felt so happy after passing stool. This is exactly the same situation I went through, my dear king. Are you able to understand this now? When you asked me at that moment what exactly I was feeling, I was in the same situation as you were now. <laughs> very funny, isn't it? I told you how I was feeling, but you thought I was insulting your son and you never appreciated it. Now are you at least able to understand my situation? Like that Gopal is asking. Now do you understand? He's again asking. So now let's see the moral. One must understand the reason behind others' words instead of being carried away by their own emotions. In this way, we will be able to avoid misunderstandings. In this way, the king also got carried away by his happiness that Gopal disclosed his true feelings. The king got furious, thinking that Gopal insulted his son. If he had taken a minute to think and understand Gopal's point of view, the misunderstanding could have been prevented. So very, very, very practical scenario, isn't it? A lot of times we have so many conversations with so many people. Then uh, we just, oh, this person said this and you kind of assume to yourself that that person is like this but when in fact that person is not of that nature you just through your own emotions you make uh, make it a point to think about that person that way but in reality he's not that kind of person he's really a nice guy but you may have think, thought otherwise so what the moral says through this story is that we should always try to understand the person from their perspective so that we don't build up our emotions to actually uh, get a sort of feeling about that guy. Okay, so that misunderstandings can be prevented and you can always be happily situated. All right, kids. So this is what is the story. I thought that was a very funny story uh, uh, and uh, very humorously portrayed. Okay, kids, are we all good now? Can we all adjourn? Hari, Hari. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's just pay our own okay. obeisances. Mancha kalpata rubia shia kripa sripa pireva cha patita na pavani pio. Vaishna vishna namo namaha. Kudanta koti vaishna vishni jai. Namaskar nila harita sakti jai. Nila prabhupada jai. Kaka suri mata ji ki jai. Bhagavatam ki jai. Vinita gandhi na mata ji ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you,